Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, and welcome to another in my series of elemental animation tutorials using After Effects and Flash. So when I'm working in Flash and I've got a gloomy scene and I want a bit of rain, I've often found that animating rain is quite challenging. It's difficult to get a sense of depth and stop my raindrops from looking just random. So actually, After Effects is a really good way of solving that problem. It comes with a very basic but effective rain simulator called CC Rainfall, which is perfect for 2D animation and superimposing on the top of it. Obviously, if you're wanting to put realistic looking rain onto video footage, this wouldn't be the best thing to use. You might want to use a more advanced particle system, for example. It's perfect for 2D stuff in Flash. So let's take a look at how I've constructed it. I'm going to create a new composition. I'm going to make it 1080p at 25 frames a second with a black background. And I think I'm going to call it rain example. I can type. There we go. So within that, I'm going to create a white solid. Call that rain. And I'm going to type in rainfall into my effects and presets. I'm going to drag that onto my white solid. So the first thing we need to do is untick this composite with original because we don't want it to composite with the white. We just want it to replace it. And you can see we get this kind of cats and dogs rain. It's absolutely pouring it down. And you can adjust this to the settings you want. Obviously, if you want cats and dogs, that's great. But you might want to reduce the amount of drops so it's a bit more subtle. You might want to change the size of the drops. Obviously, if you shove it up too high, they start looking like weird laser beams. So it's a good idea to keep it relatively low. I'm going to reset that one. You can change the scene depth, so that's how much difference there is between the big raindrops at the front and the little ones at the back. You can change the wind. This is a really useful one, because generally I find that rain looks more realistic if it's traveling at a slight angle. Let's see. There we go. Something like that. Uh, you can change the spread, so how far apart the uh, raindrops are. Obviously, if you shove that up quite high, it's going to start looking a bit more like sleet. Generally, rain doesn't scatter about in quite that kind of way. You can change the colour of the rain if you want. If you want blood rain, you can have it. Uh, you can change the opacity. I generally bump it up pretty high if I'm going to use it in flash so that we get that nice crisp image and you can change the appearance from refacting to soft solid. If we just zoom in, we can see what difference that's making. There we go. You can change the offset, so that's where it is in the actual frame. And the ground level, if you want to have the rain being cut off, at a certain point. There we go. And the random seed just sort of randomizes the rain. There we go. So next up, if you're happy with your settings, we need to find where this animation loops. So let's take a look at my example here. I started at frame zero. I've decided it loops somewhere around 1 second and 12 frames. Now the problem with these kinds of effects is that they're quite difficult to loop because they move so quickly and they're so random that the eye can catch where the loop is really quite easily. So that's why I'm going to use posterized time on this effect to limit the frame rate so that it looks a little bit more jumpy and it'll be a lot more difficult to figure out where the loop is. And it'll also fit in much better with the kind of limited animation I tend to do in Flash. So let's type in posterize. Drag posterize time onto our rain. 
Because rain moves quite quickly, we need a relatively high frame rate. So I'm going to make it 12 frames a second. And I'm going to go to 1 second and 12 frames and see if I can pull off this loop. There we go. So let's do a RAM preview and see what that looks like. So I think that's a pretty respectable rain loop there. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my composition. I'm going to add it to the media encoder queue if I'm using CC, or I'm going to add it to the render queue if I'm using CS6 and earlier. And I'm going to choose PNG sequence. The advantage of PNGs is that they have an alpha channel in, so you won't get any of this black. You'll just get the white raindrops. So it'll make it a lot easier to trace in Flash. If that doesn't seem clear, make sure you've checked out my introduction to the wave warp effect where I talk about how to trace things into Flash and import them in quite a lot of detail. So let's jump into Flash and see what the rain looks like. So in this example, I haven't even traced the bitmaps. I've just left them as transparent PNGs. It's a good idea to reduce duplicate keyframes as I showed in my wave warp introductory video to reduce the amount of computer resources used by the PNG sequence. So if you haven't checked out my introduction to wave warp already, I recommend you check that out now and learn how to reduce duplicate keyframes. And I've added this gradient background on a different layer. If I wanted to trace them, I could. Just have to click, go to modify bitmap, trace bitmap, do a little preview. You can see that it's tapered them a little bit there because I'm using the very smooth settings. If I use normal, it would tape them quite a bit less. And we might want to change the minimum area perhaps. You might like this tapering, it might be exactly what you want for your raindrops. It does look a bit more interesting. But I could change the minimum area so that they're a bit more accurate. You can see the background colors are a little bit gray there, but if I click OK, because they're all selected now, I can just change them to white and we'll get all of our raindrops looking nice and white there. You can see because these ones in the background have less detail, they've come through in a bit of a jaggy way. So that's why I didn't bother tracing these examples because I thought they looked better as bitmaps. There we go. But that's up to you. Obviously, the higher you put the minimum area, so if I put it to 50, the more stylized your rain will be. There we go. So now that you've got this rain in Flash, you can make it into a looping graphic symbol. All you need to do is click on your first frame, hold down Shift, and then click on your last frame. Go to Copy Frames, go to Insert New Symbol, and call it Rain Loop, and just need to paste your frames into there. Don't worry if your screen is not green. That's just the color of my project. Go back to the scene, delete that layer with the actual rain in it. Create a new one. Go to your library and pull that rain loop out. Once you've done that, you can position it where you want on the screen. I'm going to use my align to stick it in the middle. You might find with a PNG sequence that it takes a while to drag it from the library into the main screen. But now that you've got it there, you can extend it for as long as you want. And it will just loop quite happily, like so. So I'd say it's worth tracing your rain if you want it to use fewer resources because it's vectors. But if you don't mind it using quite a lot of computer resources, you might as well leave it as a bitmap. So that's how you create a rain template in After Effects and use it as a loop within Flash. Have a go yourself and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Coloring and Activity Book and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike and are well worth checking out.